So, I showed you a little bit about the terminal, how to maneuver, how to open a few applications here and there, and kind of how to edit and manage your files. In this little lesson, I'm going to show you how to run applications. And we've actually been doing it. We've been, every time we've used LS or CD or any of those applications, and I said the keyword there, they are applications. We call them commands because they're very simple applications. They do usually just about one function at a time. Um, but in this case, is, these are legit applications. Where they are kept is actually in a completely different directory than anywhere we are. And how we can actually run them is because this terminal and many others are automatically set up to look in the bin folder, as you can see back here, and the bin folder to look for applications. Let's go ahead and check out what's in our bin folder. As you can see, we have a bunch. We have a bunch of applications kind of just sitting there waiting to be used. We have the bash that we used before. We have echo. We have MV for move. We have cat, CP, and all those applications that we have been using are existent in this here area. Now, these aren't all the applications. In fact, these are just the very beginning. These are about the most commonly used um, and standardized applications in a Linux system. Another place we can go is if we go to bin, or sorry, user slash bin. And in here we have tons and tons and tons of applications. You can see it goes on and on and on. And these all applications are very small. They're about, I don't know, 50 kilobytes, maybe one megabyte long or big. And that's kind of how they work through. They're very small, very simple to use, and very up to the point. We can call them just by easily just uh, putting in, uh, let's see, what can I see from here? Zip. So we can either call it here, we can call it in our home directory, or we can call it wherever we want. That's because, again, the terminal knows that those folders that we just went inside are the default applications folder, so it uses them automatically to be able to um, run those applications. So you don't have to call them by complete directory listing here. So we don't have to do this to call zip, we just have to say zip. Now there's many different ways to run applications and it really re relies on the distribution you're using. In our case, Ubuntu. Uh, but those are the most common. They're automatically set and you're able to just use it by just typing it in. Sometimes, however, you'll download an application online and you won't be able to use it. You're typing it in inside this area, but it's not actually working out. One of the applications I have is And Yet It Moves. It's a pretty cool game um, and it does require to be basically um, started up. One of the best ways to do it, of course, is just to click on it and then click on Yet It Moves and that'll start it up. But how do we do that from the terminal? If I type it in, we can see that command not found. We can obviously see that it's right here. But again, it's not listed under those uh, main directories. So, what we can do is we can actually CD into desktop and then the end yet it moves folder find out what's inside and we can see this is green because it's executable we can literally start it up so when you see a green file most likely it's an executable file and you can see this all the way up here with all of these little executable files so there I am <coughs> so we want to run it if I put in yet it moves it's still not going to find it because we're in a current directory, but it's not an actual command we can use because it's not listed in those specific command folders. But if we do dot slash and yet it moves, it opens it up right for us. So we can start playing with whatever application you wanted to run. Now, this is good and bad. Good because we learn a little bit about applications and how they run. Bad because it can be a bit of a uh, repetitive. Um, the little denunciation denun or terms of these two is we learned that dot dot means backwards one so if we go CD dot dot we're going back to desktop and you can see we used to be right in here and we moved right in here because there's nothing else after it. Now if we do just a simple dot it's just going to be the area we're already in so it's literally just calling the exact same area we're in it's a little pointless in many times because you can simply just call any application to that. For instance, if I do ls like that, we see what's inside where we are right now. If I do this, same exact thing happens. 
But in these cases, where we want to run applications, when it looks for commands, it looks only for the commands in those specific areas or those folders, the bin folders. But if you have a program outside of that, how do you run it? You simply denunciate it's this program that I want to run is right in my current directory, and I want to go ahead and run it. And you simply put the name in, and then that's basically all it is to run it. And that's basically um, how many applications are handled. If you do find some online, many times you find them in a zip file or something. You just you unzip it, and all you see is a folder with a bunch of mumbo jumbo inside. Um, look for a file. Look for the name of the application, or just look for a bin dot bin uh, program or something that you can execute. Sometimes you might actually have to edit the permissions on it, and I'll show you how to do a little bit of permission editing as well. Now, another thing I'll show you is the attributes. We've done it before. Um, if we play around with attributes, we know that we can actually see all the files in an area. And let's go ahead, go to the desktop. And again, if I make a file like that, and another file like that, we can see the new file, but we can't see the dot new file. This is because the dot new file is hidden by that little dot in front. That's just a naming convention from Linux um, that says that file is hidden to the naked eye. And any user um, should really need to know it's there. And if we do ls, we can see there's and yet it moves folder and there's a new file. However, we don't see the dot new file. If we put the little attribute capital A, there it is, right in the end here. And there's other attributes as well. We can do ls l for the long version of the information. And here we can see. Um, let's see, we can see the folder name or the file name, when it was last edited, um, let's see, the time and date as well, how big that file is or folder is, we don't have anything in this text file, so of course it can be zero bytes, uh, the folder itself contains a few things, so that's going to be a certain size, the user permitted to access and execute it, and we also have the permissions area where this is going to basically determine read, write, and executability from depending on which user to which person. And I'll go over this in later times. But for now, all you need to know is this area here is giving permission to certain uh, users or groups um, on whether they can run it, read it, or write it. So that's a little bit about that. Next thing we'll go over is going to be if you get stuck in an application, you have no idea how to get out. Um, my first example was VI. Uh, I'm not very good with VI, um, so I'm not too sure how to actually exit. I press Q, it's not working. Um, uh, w, it's always some sort of hotkey. Uh, now I'm writing in it. Okay. And I'm stuck. I don't know how to get out. There's no button that says, that says anything. You can do this trick anywhere. If the program freezes on you, if you just want to abruptly end something, or if you're stuck somewhere and you just want to get out. Simply press the control Z, and I'll go ahead and press it on the keyboard. And that'll take us straight back to the main area. And again, that's control plus Z. Uh, it's not going to do anything but me showing you, but I just want to type it in front. And you can literally end any file or any program. Be warned, however, this is a forceful way to end an application. So if you're working with data or information, you're going to lose it. And there's no way to get it back. It's not going to save automatically it's not gonna you know make sure you have all your information it's just gonna end it right then and there it's basically like a force quit or an end process when you're using Windows and that's just a little bit about applications um, hope you found this a little bit uh, informative and entertaining at the same time and we'll go ahead and go to the next video